guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, oh my god, I don't even know what to say about this. Okay, in today's video, I will be talking, really just giving my thoughts about the entire first season of The Irregular Magic High School. I literally just finished it, like, what, two minutes ago and stuff after, like, starting this show last month, because this has been on my next, my freaking Netflix for about two three years I believe and every single time I've like always really just wanted to sit down and watch it but I never really had the time because I'm either so busy with like other anime requests or um anytime that I really want to sit down and watch something on my own I'm too tired and I'm exhausted and I'm like fuck it I'm like no I'm never usually usually when it's like that I never in the end end up watching the show unless somebody's like hey you know, you said you wanted to watch this show. I want to request it. And then it's just like, fuck. Okay. Oh, God. I just, I don't know where to start with this. I, like, at first I kind of want to go backwards and start with part, like, the final arc and then go into the middle arc and then go into the first arc. But we're going to go forward this time and we're going to start with the first arc. Okay. Going into this show, I knew nothing dead ass nothing all i knew was i think it was maybe about like a month or two ago everybody on fucking twitter was freaking out that this show was finally like getting a second season even though i think like around the time when the movie came out i think it was already like announced that it was getting a second season but like there was trailers and like little pvs out and everybody's like oh my god and i'm like what the hell is everybody freaking out about so then i see a picture of it and i was like oh this is the show that I've been wanting to watch for, like, the past few years on Netflix. So, last month, at the end of last month, I want to say, like, what day did I tweet that shit out? Um, uh, I want to say, like, the 28th or the 29th of last month. But, like, no, it's better to just go through my ish and just look to see the day that I literally started it. Because I started it, like, I think I... 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, and I was like, yeah, let me go ahead and watch this, because this seems really good, because the first time I tried watching this show, it was, I want to say, like, 3, 4 in the morning, and I had nothing to do, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and watch this, and I fell asleep within the first five minutes, because I was really, really tired, I think it was a day where I was, like, not only busy with doing recordings, but I had to help my mom and my dad with something one day, and so I was just fucking exhausted and wasn't able to do jack shit so I was like okay whatever and I think it was give me one second I'm looking I'm looking I'm looking no that's B and A shit no no oh my where the fuck is this like mm, is that it okay yeah this is it I started this on the no yes okay on the 21st of last month so as I said Going into this, I didn't know anything about this show. And so, uh, all I knew... <laughs> all I knew is that some of my favorite voice actors were in this show. And so, I was like, okay, I'm going to sit and go ahead and watch it. And let me see how good this show is. Because I did... I was able to talk to, like, some of my subs about this show. And maybe get their thoughts on it. And everyone said it was, like, really, really good. And so, I was like, okay. I was like, good. Because I kind of need to have something else since all, you know, winter anime is going to be over. And even though spring was coming up and I was like, well, I kind of want to watch something on my own that I can get done like that. So I was like, well, it's 26 episodes. I could binge it all. But I was like, I don't really want to binge it, binge it. I want to take my time with it as much as I could. So part freaking one, aka, you know, of this damn show of like freaking Tatsuya is fucking OP as fuck. Because this man is OP as fuck. I mean, honestly. This man <laughs> could literally give Kirito and any other character from an anime who is OP as fuck a run for his money because this dude, I mean, the funny thing was, and I think I was like three or four episodes in, I was assuming because I heard his voice like many, many times and I was like, who the fuck is this person? Funny, like, <laughs> this is what I was assuming. I heard a line and then I stopped and I was like, let me go back and listen to the line again. I think this was like episode four four for me it was between four or five and I, I like paused and so I went on my phone and I went on my um on the Annie list app just to see who he plays and then they show a picture and I'm like okay so let me see what this guy does and they're like oh this is Gilgamesh's VA so I'm freaking out at like mm, one two in the morning like oh my god like yeah I'm happy and it's 
no, this is freaking. And I couldn't believe that this is him because the last thing I saw, like the first show that I had ever seen with this dude in it is this show, even though I don't really watch this show anymore because I have been so busy and I haven't seen the last season and I really want to watch it. He played fucking gray in Fruits, Fruits, I'm about to say Fruits Basket, fairy tale. And I was just like, like, ah, I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, oh my God. Like, I, I couldn't believe it because it was just like, mm. but Tatsu, I guess he's OP as fuck. He's a really interesting protagonist. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Iki, Kirito, um, now for me, if now for me, was fucking chill and, you know, not <laughs> brooding and demanding because you know when he's mad and it's like that. And any other really, like, chill protagonist who is semi-OP as fuck by, like, by, like, maybe the first, like, ten episodes and then, you know, by the end of the series, you know, he's just, like, a godsend. And I feel like it's gonna get worse when I watch this movie in a couple of minutes. Okay, so going on to the next character. <laughs> Miyuki, aka my best girl, played by my favorite voice actor, Sarami. And I, I like she was the only one who I knew. I think yeah, her and then one other character who I knew who was in this show. So I was like, okay, dead ass. I okay. Miyuki, I love her so much. She's so fucking precious, but she is badass as fuck. When it comes to her brother, this girl will go fucking to the ends of the earth and kick some ass no matter what. I'm like, oh my god, like you think her brother is, like, fucking badass? Like, no. Look at this child by herself when she is not around her brother. The shit that she can do, like, oh my god, the crap, like, with, like, freaking, um, Shizuko? Shizuko? Yeah, 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 yeah. And part, and, like, the second arc, when they're literally having a battle with, like, melting ice with their powers, I was just like, look at this child! Like, oh my god! Like, even with the shit that they had to do in part one with, like, I think the military, the government, remember? I don't remember, because, like, I watched part one, like, binging that crap and like, last month at the end, and then going into part two and part three and ish like that. But, I mean, she's just a freaking adorable thing. But let's talk a bit, like, about the big freaking elephant in the room and the relationship of these two. Going into this, I, I knew of, like, tiny little things about it. And I was just like, okay, that's fine. And then I get to episode, I think it was three. And I knew, like, a couple of times when you see it in the show and she's like, you know, she loves her brother. Like, she really loves her brother. And she has, you know, <laughs> the brother's just complex and stuff. And there's this point where Tatsuya says, like, if we weren't brother and sister, we would be lovers. And so I'm sitting here fangirling about that shit. And I'm like, but I don't ship y'all or anything. And I'm like, oh, that's so cute. But like, I know you're being like funny and jokey about it because you're not really serious about this. It's not going to be, you know, that one anime that freaking Sarami is also in. We're in the end. And the funny thing enough, he's in it too. Where in the end, he chose his fucking sister at the end of the day. I remember the day when I fucking watched that show. And I was like, this man did not just choose his fucking sister out of all the fucking characters that he had for two fucking seasons. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> but yes, he did. And I was just like, I don't know how to feel about that. Um, so we get to episode, I think, yeah, episode three, I think it is. And we get to the end and <laughs> as a Tatsuya, do you know, help her, you know, uh, reca uh, recapitulate her, um, CDA, or, like, a P like in a way, a PDA, anyway, like, the thing that they're using for their magic and stuff. So, of course, like, he has to do something, and yada, 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 and so, I'm sitting here watching, and I was like, okay, let me stop and think about this real quick. I was like, please tell me we're not gonna go sexual with this. I was like, because she's half naked, he has no emotion, he's just looking at her, just looking at her, and not saying anything anything and I'm just like please for the love of God I was like come on now don't do this to me and I was like I like I don't want to ship these two and then it just kept going and going and then she like literally presses herself up against her brother and I was like oh my god it's going it's going and I was just like <laughs> like it's dead ass in the middle of the night and I'm watching this episode and I'm just like y'all we're really going like this but he he stopped her thank god um, and then, like, she does this, like, 
prank shit on him and then because it, it was so weird and it goes by so freaking fast like he dies and then it comes back to life and i'm sitting here i'm like what the freak just happened and i'm like hold on wait i'm like i'm so confused about this shit and so he like plays it off like it's nothing but she's like oh i think my prank went a little too far and i was looking like bitch you think i mean you're my best girl but you think like you just killed your brother for a second and he comes back to life like it's nobody's fucking problem and i'm just like okay i, I have to accept it Okay, but yeah, I, like, the funny thing is, like, kind of now, when, after finishing, like, the last few episodes and seeing the moments between them two, I cannot believe I'm going to say this. <laughs> but I ship it. I don't know why. I it just, there, there's times, like, when I look at these two and I'm like, yeah, you're brothers and sister and I can't ship you. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm like, dead ass, no, like, mm, it's wrong. But it's just... When you see the moments between these two, like, it's the last episode of Arc 2 before Arc 3 starts, where all the schools, I think it's like nine schools, I believe, um, are in the ballroom and they're all dancing with each other and stuff. And so, at the end, with the credits and everything, here comes the little sis and asking them for a dance and shit like that. And I was watching this last night. It was like two something in the morning. And I'm just like in awe and I'm just like, oh my god, like they look so fucking cute together. And I'm sitting over here, but like the other half of me is like, I really should not be shipping this because oh my god, like it's it's cute, but then it's like it's not too far. And then but I'm like, I can't like look at them, they're just so fucking adorable. You love them just so fucking much. But like I I'm like I ship it, but then there are times where I'm like, I don't know, because there was like I think it was episode twenty twenty two where she tried to kiss him. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you're worried about him. I get that. You're the little sis. You got to do that. But, like, hello? <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. I was like, she's going. She's going. And then he woke up. She trips. And then he catches her. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Are you? You're not going to. This ain't going to be, like, domestic girlfriend where you're literally going to pull her ass in. And you're are just going to go at it. And thank God it, it really didn't. Um, But it, like, went from her going to her room and then you know him like saying yeah i know you're worried about me and it's like that and i was like oh my god he's just so freaking sweet but i'm like okay i'm like mm -hmm. yeah you like they they close thank god but they're not like there are times where i'm like i feel like it's gonna go a little too far but actually i'm really okay with it at times i, I think it's just cute but i don't know i think when season two comes there's gonna be a moment where i'm gonna be like are you fucking kidding me but yeah i mean i think the relationship between those two is just really really good and i enjoyed it for what it was um okay who else should we talk about erica <laughs> erica our resident redhead tomboy i thought she was probably one of the most badass females besides miyuki um out of it she's one of those girls that like at first i didn't think she was going to become one of those like really interesting characters but like later on especially in the final episode leading into it and then the stuff that she did with um leo that was really interesting especially those two and the dynamic that they have because i was starting to ship those two and but it, it was weird because at the same time because in arc two during the competition towards the end of it when she had an argument with her brother and um mari and then she goes to walk away and um mikihiko comes in to like talk to her it seems like Miki has feelings for her, but the thing is, it's just more or less, um, you're trying to figure out, like, is do you, do you not? I don't know. And then it, it shifts towards her and then Leo, and then you have Mizuki and Miki, like, they're the only ones together, so you assume that they're getting it together because they have moments in the, like, last few like well no the first couple of episodes of the final arc of this show because like to me all three of these arcs like arc one and arc two felt like book one and then arc three felt like book like the, maybe the beginning of book two i don't know i don't know how these books go i would love to read them but i don't really know if they're like um translated because like between one book series that I, I'm currently reading, another series I can show for Real Night that I really want to read because everybody freaking knows how much I love the shit out of that series, in a way. And I kind of really want to read this, but I don't know. I'm reading too many things, and, I, and sometimes I don't really have time to just like go on to something else. But okay, what else do I want to talk about? But 
Erica and Leo like us. They're really good. Um, I thought Hattori for him. He was a really interesting character. Oh, this one. Freaky Haruka Ono. <laughs> Haruka Ono. This, okay. This chick, I really like her. She might have to be like second to third best girl for me. Or really, like, if we're talking about a woman, like, best woman for sure. Because she, like, I don't know why. I kind of shift her with Hatsuyo's as well. But I, I was like, okay. So she's pretty. She's cute. She seems interesting, like, normal as a teacher and everything. And how Tatsuya kept asking her to do, like, backstories. I mean, not backstory. Um, like, investigations and so on. Blackmail and like that. So that she could get information back to him. Okay. Did not know. <laughs> Because this surprised me at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, the person who voices her <laughs> is another one of my favorite actresses. And so I'm sitting here, uh, laying on my bed, 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm, like, watching. And I, like, I hear her talk for a moment. And then I'm like, hold up, wait. Go back. And <laughs> take my fire sticker when I go back. And I was like, I know that voice. And lo and behold, it's fucking... My baby, my umu. <laughs> my car got this and cried. I'm just like, oh shit. Like, yeah, she's probably already going to be best girl for me no matter what. But she's freaking adorable. I kind of hope that we get to see more of her in season two. But it really just depends on how <sighs> season two goes. Because we're you know, I'm going to talk about that ending. Because, oh god. I mean, that ending. But, okay. I'm going to skip um, some a couple of characters. Mm, I thought Honoka was interesting, kind of was interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. Mari. Mari. Oh my god. Like, that girl surprised me too fucking much. I couldn't believe it. Okay. This character. When I was watching the opening, I'm getting towards the end, and I see Tasia, and there's this guy walking towards him. And then I stop. <laughs> Literally. This dude literally looks like Suzaku Kurarugi from Kogia's fucking Masa Masayuki? Masa? No, Masaki. Masa. Or I'm, I'm just gonna call him Suzaki because he looks like fucking Suzaku. I was automatically assuming that this kid was going to be a bad guy. Someone who, you know, yes, works for maybe like spies, but he still, you know, goes to a different school out of all these different schools and stuff like that. But he's still like, he's relatively good, but then he's relatively bad at the same time. And honestly, he changed. By the first time I met him, I didn't like him at first. I, I just could not trust him because that feeling that you have when you see someone and you're just like, I really just don't fucking trust you no matter what. But then by the time I finished the series, I really enjoyed him as a character. Episode, I think it's 16 for arc two, the battle between him and Tatsuya. That is literally the best thing the animation quality, the sound quality, the freaking cinematography, everything about that episode was fucking good to the point where last night I had to rewatch it twice because that shit was fucking good. I mean, we could sit here, you know, fuck I am. We're going to talk about the fucking music of this show. I mean, the OST of this is fucking good. The songs I can't. They're like a godsend. And I was just like, I couldn't stop listening to them. Even like fucking today with the fact is like, <laughs> I was watching my last two Patreon shows and I have been sitting here for like two hours straight trying to download episode five of, um, Sinfogger Axis. And I couldn't find a file even with going the fuck on Yan and like doing the situation on that. And I couldn't stop listening to like, I think it's battle four over and over and over and over and over again. Plus go black and a couple others. But the biggest thing that surprised me, I think, they have Lotus Juice in this. I'm not 100% sure, but it sounds like him. And the fact that this man is still, like, I mean, this man, he makes some good-ass music. But, like, ooh, I, I just couldn't because some of these songs are just, ugh. I, I just, mm, mm, amazing, beautiful, mwah. Like, yes, that shit was good as fuck. Like, 2 o'clock in the morning, having some headphones on, just jamming to it. Everything. <laughs> Like an idiot. Having your dog watch you and look at you like, what the fuck are you doing at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning while, you know, you're trying, you're supposed to be going to bed. Mm-hmm. Had a good old time last night. <laughs> but, okay. So, I want to go back and talk about 
still the stuff that happened in episode three with the fact is that I think it's, it's called regrowth because with the last episode, Miyuki finally said everything about it. And I think when I saw it for the first time, I was thinking, okay, Tatsuya can only use it on itself, right? I was like, there's never going to be a point in time where from now to the end of this season, he's never going to use it on somebody else. No. <laughs> I, like, I was like, eh, maybe, I don't know. But then now knowing that when he uses it on somebody else, he also gets hurt from it. Like, I was like, then why fucking use it? But I get the fact that, yes, it's either having K or kitty how to die or you just getting like brutally injured and bruised but you just it doesn't phase you as much you don't get to see like the insides of it but like i mean this dude honestly anything that comes his way he just like instantly fucking handles it no matter the hell what and i'm just like i i can't with you bro like oh my god but oh god like but like, yeah so part one i will say like part one was like the intro of everything, because typically most anime is like that. Part two was a really interesting tournament arc with all these other schools. Part three. Part fucking three. Let me just go ahead and say this, and I didn't say this with the other ones. I don't like, because we, and we, we were introduced to her early on, I do not like their aunt. Their aunt is a fucking bitch. The biggest thing is, in that first opening, there's a part, and the funny thing was, in my opinion, they really didn't answer this a lot to me. And then it makes it makes me wonder why I should possibly read the book. There's a point in the opening where Miyuki is, like, in a pool of her own blood. She gets shot, and Tatsuya is over there, like, you know, holding on to her, consoling her, and it's like that. And I'm guessing it had to deal with the stuff that happened years prior that they kind of talked about a little bit and something else with the fact is that um the Suzaku Kuduruki character um got his name as the Crimson Prince and stuff like that I'm guessing but still like as someone who has not read this series and you're going into it and you're like on the intro you jam into Lisa and shit and then you see this picture you like this part of her laying in her own blood and you stop everything and you're sitting here wondering why the fuck who the fuck shot her? What the fuck happened? And then you go into the show and they barely really talk about it because there's sometimes, and and this is why I have like mixed feelings on series that it's like, you still need to kind of know that lore before you watch this. This is how like, I think a lot of people were when um, Final Fantasy 15 came out. <laughs> when the TV, not the TV show, uh, the four part anime series came out and then the movie came out. How people still had to do research before playing this game to understand certain things. And then finally, when uh, Square Enix did that update, I think like a year later after the game came out and finally put like some scenes from the movie and people were like, oh, okay, now I get it. But I still have to do some research on it. That's what it kind of felt like to me. Even though I haven't really done any research because like I said, I just fucking finished this like not that long ago. And I said, as I said, I'm going to watch the movie in a couple of minutes and then talk about the movie after that. But it was just like so many unanswered questions with that, especially with it. And I'm just like, we're, we're not going to talk about that at all like the biggest thing that's in that fucking opening her getting shot and we're just gonna blatantly like glaze over that like it's like nothing and i was like come on hold up like this could be really important i still have questions about like um tatia's mom like okay apparently did she die because apparently yes in the last part we meet their stepmother stepmother's a bitch too because even though she's a little bit interesting because my best girl doesn't like her. I don't like her. And it's kind of weird to say, like, yeah. But I get it. I, I just didn't like her. I Like, the way she came in and, the, like, her air... Mm, her demeanor kind of just, like, put something in me. And I was just like, yeah, I don't really like you. I was like, mm, mm, mm. As I got a new one here, shit that you gotta say. But, oh, God. Like, the aunt, right now, as of, out of, like, the mafia that was in part two, or, like, Lou from part three, or even the people that they had to deal with in part one, the aunt is, like, to me, the most worst freaking character of this series until, like, we get into season two and whoever the fuck we're gonna deal with. Or when I watch the movie in a couple of minutes. 
Um, but it just makes you, shut up, Snapchat. It just makes you wonder, like, if season two or maybe even the movie is going to go, like, a little bit more into their backstory as a family and especially, like, maybe their aunt and then anyone else because it feels like every, like, adult-wise, the bad guys of this are, like, somewhat, um, the aunt, the mafia, maybe the, the stepmom and then a couple others. Like, they're very corruptive. I mean, like, oh, I, I was just in here like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, damn. But, okay. My biggest thing was with this, they use magic for everything. I mean, they literally use magic for, like, every fucking thing. It wouldn't even surprise me if they used it for fucking cooking, I, like, in my opinion. But, um... Like, it's been, like, a couple of weeks since I watched part one, and I'm just, like, trying to think of everything. There's this, oh, my God, I'm trying to remember. Ooh, and I can't, because it's, like, it's right there, but it's just, like, bam, I can't. And it's going to come to me in, like, a really weird way. There's this moment. I think it, I think it was in part two. It was Mari. Because it was a moment with Mari, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, the cheating scandal situation, not only with the stuff with Mari, but then also with the stuff with Miyuki. And the fact is that she used flying magic, and everybody was going batshit crazy during her match. But then the following match, all these other schools are now using that shit. And I was like, well, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I get the fact that, yes, Miyuki using it is a little unfair. I get that. So maybe the people of this com competition, like the head honcho, should be like, hey, don't use it. No! Everybody freaking uses it. <laughs> the next imagine, I was like, that makes no fucking sense. I mean, because I'm like, let's also talk about some of these games. At first, like, some of them were really confusing to understand because of the fact is, if you haven't read that lore, you don't know what the frick is going on. But, like, some of them were easy to understand. Like, the melting the ice thing, that was easy. The one that Miyuki, like her, um, her rookie match where she had to fly, I was a little confused about that, but I was like, okay, I'm kind of getting the gist of it, but then at the same time, I'm kind of getting confused. Um, the shit that freaking Suzaku <laughs> and Tatsuya did, I think that was like still the best, like, competition match that they did. I think, like I said, that, that was just like the best thing ever. I'm sorry. Um... What else can I say? I think the big, the funniest thing was when, like, the Suzaku character, like, figured out that they were brother and sister. That was fucking hilarious. Like, that shit made me laugh last night. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Because there, there's something. I know there's one. Oh, okay, no. No, 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 no. Before I talk about that. All right. I'm going to talk about the one thing that I kind of disliked about this show. And it's not, like, a really big thing. And, I mean, it's something... That at first, I was like, I dislike this. And then the more and more I got into the show, <laughs> by the time I finished it, I was like, hmm, okay. It's not the biggest dislike. I was like, hmm, kind of minor and ish. It's the CGI. I don't remember the name of the company who made this show. Thing, I don't think it's A1 Pictures. I think it's the one that's a K. When I saw the CGI, I think it's like episode one or two. You see it early on. And I'm sitting here and I'm like... Am I watching, like, per Persona 5? Like, dead ass? Because if you look at Persona 5, the animation, and then you look at this show, the CGI is a little similar to it. But later on into the series, when Naitatsuya is wearing, um, the, uh, the, the black armor from the uh, JSDF group, it's a little bit better. It's, like, a hell of a lot better than it was. There is an, there's also another point in part three where the schools are doing, like, that presentation for, like, the thesis and everything, and there's a point where, like, they do this, like, not really, like, a turn, but just, like, a, a part where they're, like, looking at the audience, and everybody in the audience looks exactly the same. The same generic hairstyle, the same eyes, everything, and it's just all 3DS, and I was like, okay, but I was like, that's not good. But I was like, it, it's a minor thing. That was my biggest thing about it. Um, I feel like Lou, the villain of part three, he was very un overrated because of the fact is like, to me, he wasn't, he wasn't really predominantly in almost every single episode. Like, I want to say out of the 
eight part, eight episodes that he was in. I want to say he was only really in four, it seemed like to me. I mean, because the first episode he comes in, he literally kills someone. The person who was tailing Tatsuya and never eventually Erica and Leo, by the end of the episode, he gets killed. So I was like, okay, oh shit, like this dude is really possibly going to be the greatest villain that they've ever faced for season one. And then episode 26. I mean, he comes in in this badass armor, fights Mari, Mar freaking Mari, Leo, and Erica, and then eventually um, Mayume, who kind of reminds me of Tomoyo from Car Captain Square. Those four go against him, and that shit was incredible. Good ass music, but incredible as fuck. Um, oh god, I mean, still, like, this show was really, really good. I mean, I love the fact that it kept me on my toes. I, I still have so many questions about it because the fact is, that ending, <laughs> that fucking ending, with Tatsuya literally blowing up, obliterating, like, all these ships and everything. Miyuki having a talk with her aunt. And then it just, like, had, it like, oh my god, I don't even know what to say about that. It ends. And she's, like, having, she's the narrator, and she's, like, voicing over everything, showing, like, all the rubble and all that ish, and everybody's just, like, you know, coming down after what all just happened in the span of this last arc. And I'm sitting here at the edge of my bed over on this side near my door, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Or, I'm like, this is how we're gonna end. So, like, because they hadn't even showed Tatsuya again after that, and I was just like, we're not gonna see Tatsuya. I was like, she's not gonna be able to, you know see her brother again and be like well welcome home but then he shows up and i was like okay okay that's not bad but i, I mean that shit like really pissed me the fuck off i was like we're gonna really end season one like that then also like oh god the last little few minutes because i only had three fucking minutes left they ended it with like let's go and <laughs> like hug <laughs> A best girl and like zoom in on his face and then that's how it ends and i'm sitting here looking like are you fucking kidding me like come on like i was assuming that they were gonna at least have something to literally be like okay here's how we're gonna end season one here's like a little sneak preview of this movie but i mean i was like well damn now i feel so bad for you guys because this show this show came out in 2014 and it is now 2020, and y'all had to wait a long, and I mean a long-ass time for this show. Unlike me, who just started watching this show last month and finished it officially today. And this show comes out, season two comes out, I think, summer, fall of this year, I believe. Like, deadass. I really feel bad for you guys. Five years? <laughs> I, I don't think I could have waited that long, but I'm, I'm really glad I got into this show because the lore and everything that I've seen in the span of 26 episodes of meeting these characters in part one, a tournament arc in part two, and then seeing, you know, Tatsuya go into a fucking godsend because let's also talk about that. Freaking <laughs> Miyuki kisses him on the head and she's like, basically go out there like you know be op as you want to be and i was like hold on wait 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 i was like so now is he op now i was like what the i was like is this like is he over overpowered like i mean has he reached a level where this man is just like too fucking powerful like oh my god and then the shit that he does in the last few episodes and i'm like yep this is like god tier op -ness. like right now i was like oh my god this dude i can't but i still love him as a character like oh my freaking god but Biggest things that I kind of want to hope for for this movie <laughs> is I, I don't want it to number one recap some uh, recap <laughs> recap um some things because I usually hate when they do that for some movies because they're like okay it's been a couple of years because the movie came out nope two years ago 2018 so four years later yeah it has the right to it but I think if somebody just recently watched it aka me um. I think it would be a little bit better to kind of just like cut that out, but it really just depends on what they did for this movie. I feel like the girl who is featured in the season two um, poster, she's possibly going to make an appearance in this, maybe. 
Um, I think the Suzaku kid and his partner slash possibly me. I, well, I think they're a boyfriend and girl. I think they're boyfriends because the dynamic between those two are really interesting and they're just so adorable together. And the fact that, you know, um, the shorter one really cares for him so freaking much, especially because the fact is he truly wanted to go with him in that last episode, but he told him no because he didn't want him to go with him and then worry about everybody else and it's like that and how he was like, um, he told Masa that he was his commander no matter what at the end of the day because their relationship is just like cute as fuck and I kind of wish maybe in season two that we get a little bit more of that because I think going into at the end of part two, going into part three, I was assuming that we were never really going to see Masa again. I was like, okay, so he gained an ally. We're probably never going to see him. And then <laughs> a couple of episodes later, here he is. And I was like, oh, okay, never mind. Uh, um, I don't think they're going to show Mayumi or Jumanji because I feel like they've already like graduated, even though they didn't show it at the end of season one. If this is good, because see, either one or two things is going to happen with this movie. Either it's going to be a couple of weeks after everything of what happened in season one or a year after it where, yeah, it makes sense for these kids to either still be in high school or like in the military. Because the shit that they do in the span of 26 episodes, I mean, these kids, I mean, fuck <laughs> Like, ooh, I didn't really talk about it, but I was like, mm, maybe I should go ahead. Like, they have police in this anime. And I'm like, okay, so the kids are relatively, like, if the police, maybe even SWAT team, um, any other person couldn't do it, the kids are, like, the last hope. These kids are so fucking good at combat. Like, oh my god. It makes you wonder, like, with what, like, Tossi is gonna do. Because... He's gonna go. He's technically working with the military right now, but he ain't getting paid for that shit. Um, Shizuku even asked him, "Oh, you can, you know, work with me and my family." And he was like, "You know, we'll get there when we get there. That ain't a yes or a no. That ain't even a fucking maybe. We'll get there when we fucking get there." And, and it's just like, oh my god, like damn, these kids, like they know they shit. I mean, these kids are so fucking combat ready. They, it's like their families. Not only with these schools, but their families literally have trained them from day fucking one. And that's something that I would have really loved to see because, like, with Honoka, when she first met both, you know, <laughs> the Shiba kids and how vast their knowledge is and the fact is that they didn't really show shit. Like, yes, they've shown stuff with Tatsuya and maybe a little bit of my best girl did fight, like, especially with the training stuff and everything, but not really how they were as kids. So that's what I'm kind of hoping that the movie gives me because I really want to see that. So I want to see more of a relationship with those two than anything else. I mean, honestly, like I said, this was a damn good anime and it was like everything I fucking needed for, you know, a couple of weeks. I mean, I'm glad that I binged it, but then at the same time, I took my time on it. Um, I honestly can't wait for season two. I just, like I said, I still feel bad for you guys because you guys had to wait longer than me. I'm waiting, like, a couple of months. Y'all had to wait years for this to be confirmed. And the fact that it's finally confirmed for you guys, I mean, you know, I'm happy for you. I mean, it's like how... <laughs> I love comparing this. It's like when Kingdom Hearts 3, for me, finally, you know, was confirmed. It was coming out. No bullshit. Even though, yeah, it got delayed, you know, because of freezing stuff. But the day when that shit came to my house and I got it... And I was literally in my room, still, like, having to do recordings and shit. And I was trying to hurry up and get all my recordings done because I was like, mm, am I going to say fuck it and just, you know, play Kingdom Hearts 3? But I got my shit done. And then any other time when people were like, oh, hey, DJ, are you going to react to this? And I was like, no. Uh, I was like, I got Kingdom Hearts 3 on my mind. Like, this is the only fucking thing I care about. It's like the same thing with Final Fantasy VII Remake, how it's just like, it's finally here. I'm done. It's there. And it's like, it's good. But then you don't want to really want to binge it or like try to play through it really quickly. Like I haven't played the remake and I really want to, but I kind of want to wait until um, <laughs> the price goes down because I'm trying to save for a Switch. Even though like literally everywhere where you fucking go, there is no fucking Switch. And you're just like, oh my God, like everybody in the 
fucking grandma was like, yeah, we're going to buy a fucking switch. But yeah, I, I'm just still, I'm really happy for you guys. Whether you started the show in 2014 or you came from 2014 onwards, even till now, like, yeah, but I'm going to go ahead and stop right here for now. I'm going to go ahead and watch this film. After that, I will come back and then talk about the movie and my thoughts and then maybe predictions of season two. I don't know. But yeah, go ahead and pause that video and I'll see you guys in one second for the review of the movie. Okay, so I just finished watching this movie. Before we even start on this, there's a couple of things, I think about one or two things that I forgot to say. And I instantly got reminded maybe like a minute after I finished recording the 40 minute video for the first half. It's about the blooms and the weeds. Yes, the blooms are superior to the weeds, but it didn't, the biggest question I was wondering, because I kept asking this on my Twitter like multiple times and I thought somebody, you know, maybe at 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning was going to see it, but nobody, I, I'm guessing people did see it, but they just was like not going to say shit. Why did the blooms hate the weeds so much? Why were so many people so angered about them? I get the fact that, yes, they're lesser than them. They're kind of like how um, in Chivalry of a Failed Night with Iggy in the situation that he was, that, you know, he was a failed, um, he wasn't superior. And of course, like I said, blooms are superior to the weeds and like literally anything that the weeds do, the blooms don't really seem to freaking matter about it no matter what. But I mean, like, that was the, like, what did the bloom, I mean, what did the weeds do that the blooms really don't give them ish about it? Is it not only the students of the school? Is it the school themselves? Is, is every other freaking school like that as well with their weeds? I mean, seriously, there was a lot of unanswered questions with that. But continuing on to this movie. So I literally, just like a minute ago, just finished this movie. And I got a lot of questions. Two biggest questions is going into this because I was assuming that this was going to be either right after season one or something. This is around spring freaking break. And the, you know, they're just taking a break and it's like that and they get that good spring break and everything. Like, I, I don't really know how to feel about this one because like, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it for what it was. It was interesting and everything. But for like maybe the first couple of minutes, it just felt a little fan service to me. And of course it was, but then there was this point, and I didn't see it clearly in the regular TV show, but they show it. He has, like, a freaking mark on his chest. Where the heck did that come from? They ain't talk anything about that in the freaking original series. <laughs> so I'm like, what the frick is going on? I'm like, where did that come from? Oh, my God. But, like, it was it was really confusing about that. But then they, uh, they also talked about that Miki is now a bloom. And at the end of the movie... Tatsia became a bloom so I'm really happy for them like oh my god but then what about Erica or no I think Erica was already no Erica wasn't already one Mizuki was already one I believe but what shouldn't Erica like deserve to be one as well after the issue that she's done for 26 episodes in a movie I'm saying for Christ's sake um so literally like the first couple of minutes it, it's literally these kids being tested to move this asteroid and such and you find out that they're all clones and that one of them escapes and her name is Koa. And she's so freaking adorable. Like, oh my god. <laughs> this whole movie is literally about protecting this girl and then also like trying to make sure that this satellite don't hit Earth because it's gonna cause World War Three up in this bitch. And I mean it was like so it was a really good movie, but the weirdest thing, there are two things about this movie that confused the hell out of me. Lena, and then this other woman who, I don't even know her name. She shows up, don't even got it, like, in flashbacks, and we don't know who she is. Lena comes in at the beginning, and I'm thinking she's going to take a break, but, like, her, um, one of her subordinates tells her, her commander, saying, hey, you got to go to Honolulu. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then we never see her again until maybe about, like, almost, maybe almost an hour into the movie where she's talking to ralph and a couple of other people and she's not she doesn't look the same she looks a little bit older she looks like she has red she has blonde hair and older and so i'm looking at this girl i'm like this is lena i'm like this doesn't look like the same girl so she uses magic to basically transform herself to be a little bit older or something so i was like okay i ain't gonna question that because they kind of gave me answer later on and such and she knows 
Tatsu and Miyuki. The thing is, they never talked about this in season one. And so I'm sitting here, I'm like, hold on. How do y'all already know each other? Because in the 26 episodes, a girl named Lena was never freaking mentioned. So you wait until the movie to literally mention this character. Unless, and I'm going to say this now, she's mentioned in the freaking like novel series. And this movie is like her first official appearance. Unless this is the same girl that's going to be in season two. I don't really know because I would literally have to go back and look at a freaking trailer and then look at her and be like, okay, yeah, you're in season two no matter what, bitch. But I'm like the whole, like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I was almost done and I had to go back and go get another coffee because I was watching my kiss anime and such and it stopped on me. Like I had minutes left before I was done and I'm still sitting here and I'm like, when the fuck did they talk about this girl named Lena? And so that's why I was like, at the moment, like, when I went, when I was almost finished, like getting another copy, I was like, why does this feel like a filler to me? And I don't 100% want to say this is a filler, but it feels like a filler because of the fact is one care, well, two characters literally come in this movie and we're, we're supposed to already know information about them, but we don't. That's the thing. If there was like an OVA or something that I was supposed to watch before this movie, then yeah, then I'll understand that. Or doing some research on the, on these two characters, because the other character, literally Tatsuya and Miyuki, both have flashbacks of her, of like before, and Tatsuya's flashback, where she, it seems like she's dying, and then in Miyuki, she's just like there. And so it made me think, like, is that your mom? Is that someone that you guys really cared about or something? Because there's still a lot of unanswered questions with this plot of having, you know, a flashback of a woman who presumably me and maybe countless of other people don't know who the heck she is because of the fact is you haven't read the source material so that's one thing that I'm sitting here I was like really confused about because I'm like who the freak is this woman and they never say her name so that's why I was sitting here like um, eight minutes for like an hour almost an hour and 30 minutes sitting here looking confused as hell every time when she pops up like twice literally I do love the fact that Jumanji uh Mari and Mayumi were all featured in this because it's our like you already know Mari the other three they've already graduated that's the thing and I do like the fact that they literally talked about it for like a second but then I feel like what they're gonna do in season two is possibly show it I'm not 100% sure but they could they probably I don't know shit but it would be nice too I'm just saying I mean it was good the movie was really good but it just it left a lot of unanswered questions like in the end and it just made me a little confused and now it makes me want to go back and rewatch the 26 episodes over again to see where they're possibly talked about Lena. I mean I'm gonna try to have this video come out on Friday. I still have to edit my Patreon shows and such so I really don't know but I enjoyed it for what it was. I thought uh Coppola was a cute interesting girl and the fact is that not only she wanted, she was supposed to be saved because she ran away because a woman um, got attached to her and plus the kids. And she told her basically to escape. And so she helped her escape and told her to find Mayumi. But she didn't find Mayumi. She found like Erica and everybody else because she went on the wrong plane. But it was cute. At least they like took care of her until Mayumi and Mari came in. Um, and then eventually like, the fact is that they were cloning these kids and they were still using these kids no matter what. And I was thinking, I was like, if they continue these experiments on these kids, they'll die. And it's like, only one person really cares about them. And then the guy with the glasses who was like the leader in command of this experiment, he didn't give a shit about these kids. It was like, okay, if they die, turn into a doll whatsoever, like when I thought they were going to die and finding out that they were going to just like turn into a doll when they were just going to be emotionless, like beings and stuff that they were still gonna be people but had no fucking emotions he just would have continued on like after experiment after experiment after experiment because at the end of the day as a scientist at, you're just really gonna care about that so i'm like it's just like what the fuck but i mean the biggest surprise about this was like the last few minutes their aunt shows up so i'm like was this your plan because you over here smirking like what the hell are you smirking about? There's got to be something. And so it makes me wonder if like the itch that she said at the last episode has to do with this and then going into season two, because we know the way the first season ended, she's going to have both 
Miyuki and Tatsuya come visit her so that they can have a conversation about what they were like about the ish. So I'm just over here, I'm like Give me something. I don't know, like something. But she it was just like a moment and then gone. One other thing I want to talk about with the main series. Let's just talk about <laughs> Tatsuya again. Okay. You know how, like, in some series, Sora Online, a couple other series that I can't really name on top of my head, typically, let's say a character or characters get this power. And they only, they use it for one time, and it's never used again throughout, like, the 26 episodes, 30 episodes, 100 episodes, whatever. The one thing that I really like about Tatsuya is that the shit that he done he's done in like episode one two like things that he uses he still uses throughout this series unlike Kirito where Kirito uses one thing or two things or three things or umpteen things that he has that makes him OP as fuck and he never uses them again and I mean because that was the one thing that pissed me off about Sora Online I was like hold up you have these awesome like abilities and you use them one and you never use them again while Tatsuya over here he has abilities and he keeps throwing them out like it's freaking gummy bears or freaking candies in a candy shop and it's just like yeah let me use this let me use that let me use this mm -hmm, let's just keep going and he doesn't, like, it's not one and done. He can t constantly continues with it. I mean, this dude, every single time I see him, he becomes more powerful, like, every single time. So I'm like, well, what the hell are you going to be like in season two? Because shit, I, I really want to know. Because the fact is that, yes, this comes out in summer. And the fact is that, yeah, I'm really going to probably sit here and rewatch that show, like, this show over again, just to just have the information still in my mind because I know I'm going to have like so many freaking questions going on between when season two starts and then I'm gonna be sitting here like on a way I'm confused about that I'm confused about this because who knows relatively how this second season is gonna start because this could literally start a year after season one and the movie and ish and then you know Lena comes out and just be like mm -hmm, yeah she's just here but I really just hope that when season two comes, they give Lena a little more character development because it just, to me, it felt like she was interesting. She's an interesting character and I want to know so much more about her. But because of the fact is that she already knew Tatsuya Miyuki way before we knew, it, it's just like, well, why didn't you put that in the show? Why didn't you put the backstory on that woman that Tatsuya Miyuki knew into the show? There's so many unanswered questions with that. And so with season two, I really hope that they do that because it feels like so many like gaps in it between the TV show and the movie. And it feels like they tried to do as much as they could to connect everything as best that they could. And in a way, it feels like a big old jumbled mess because if you're someone who reads the source material, you know everything besides someone like me who's like, okay, let me be an anime only person. And if I have time to read the source material, then eventually I'll, I'll understand. But because of the fact is I am an anime only and I'm coming into this and then you go into the movie and you meet this new character and it's like, okay, when everybody else comes in, she'll be new to them as well. They're going to go ahead and ask her like, hey, who are you? But they already know her and you're just like, did I miss something? <laughs> That's what it really felt. I mean, I don't know if anybody else felt like this. This movie came out two years ago. And so it said it was like, they said it was announcement in like the 19th volume of the series. So it makes me think that this movie was based off of one of these novels. It had to be because why? I mean, just that's, that's all I want to know. Why? <laughs> just, why? I mean, I looked up some things. Some people really didn't like this movie. Not only for the fan service, but some people said it just didn't make sense. Um, but like on Annie List and a couple of things, people have given it like four stars. But it was still good. I still enjoyed it for what it was. I like I mean, you made Tatsuya like OP as fuck, and we all know he's hot as fuck. He's like as of right now, he's now the next dude in my harm that I'm like literally thirsting over because between him and <laughs> <laughs> nice comment from you know the detective the millionaire detective like oh my god but like seriously I just hope when season two comes 
in the summer. Just give me like things that like literally will help connect the movie and the TV show a lot more because with these two things, they're like two separate entities, but they're still in the exact same timeline, but there's still like so many things that are missing. The connection between them. How do they meet and stuff? Same thing with the lady. What's her connection to, you know, these two kids? And then maybe does she, does she know everybody else? That's so many things. So going into season two, it's been like a couple of weeks since I saw the trailer. I don't really remember what most, most of the things that I watch. I might have to rewatch it in a couple of minutes. Um, I think right now, if I could give a prediction, maybe, I don't really know. I, I really have no freaking clue at all. I think it'll be a lot of focus on maybe Angela if, she is going to show up in season two and maybe her backstory, maybe the purple haired woman possibly as well. Anything on Aunt Maya, um, Sayaka might make an appearance as well because I have so many unanswered questions about her. Maybe their dad might appear and then something. I don't know because I feel like some of these people who family wise that are important to Miyuki and Tatsuya didn't really get that like big time to shine throughout the 26 episodes so I'm guessing the second season is going to give them a more like greater role for them I don't know um I don't really know what else that's really it I, I really have nothing else to say it was a really good series I enjoyed it a lot I mean as much as I would have probably loved to do a reaction with you, I just, like I said, I decided to just watch it on my own. And I was like, I'm going to binge it. Like I said, I had it on my Netflix queue for like two to three years. And I said, well, since we're in quarantine and I literally have nothing else to do besides record shit and then take care of my dog and everything and take care of my mom and shit like that and cook and clean and whatever. I was like, yeah, I'm kind of bored. So I'm going to go ahead and watch a new series. And it was good really really good I would have if I had to put this like probably my top 10 in it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah top 10 top 5 mm -hmm. it was just really really good but other than that guys that is my like thoughts on the series overall <laughs> regular and the magic high school and magic high school and plus the movie if you guys enjoyed it please give me a like it really helps me out also subscribe to my channel I make videos every single day Join the Master Squad, and of course, I will see you guys in summer when season two airs. If there is anything else you want me to know about this series, you can put it in the comments below. You can message me on Twitter, and we can talk about it. Um, you can message me on Annie List. Like, I don't use my Annie List anymore. I use one of my Annie List. I use Annie List a lot more. So wherever you want to message me, you can even message me on here. I don't care. But if you want to ask me questions about it, or if I have questions, go ahead. Whatever floats your boat. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.